the Sermon on the Mount, also known as the Beatitude, is a very famous uh, part of the scripture, a very famous text from the Gospel according to Matthew. And many view this passage as the New Testament equivalent of the Ten Commandments in the First Testament. Because it both happened on the mountain, we have, in both cases, we have a very revered teacher, Moses and, and Jesus. And it's an, seen as, as the key for the kingdom of God. So people go to the Bible and start reading it, only to discover that it's a, an invitation to a very miserable life. No, seriously, it's who are blessed? Well, the meek, the mourner, those who have nothing to eat. And, and we read that and we're tempted to say, well, I don't want to be that. I don't want to be that fellow. And, and I cannot do this. Maybe, maybe some special people, some holy men and women can do it, but not me. And that's often the mistake we do when we read texts like the Beatitude, because this is not a prescription. It's not to be blessed. You ought to be a meek or... No, it's an invitation. An invitation to a different lifestyle, an invitation to a different way of being, and an invitation to the world that Jesus came to proclaim. Jesus came to proclaim the reversal of the human experience. That's what something people were saying about Jesus. He's always putting everything upside down. Well, with these words that seems to put the logic of our world upside down, he challenge his disciple and he challenge us. Why? Well, if we look at it, we discover what? We discover that we're called to open our hearts to one another, to show mercy for those who cry for it and not to turn our back, to stop belittling, criticizing, mocking the faith of others, their beliefs, their spirituality, their custom. We're called not to hoard our resources and, and food at the expense of others. We are called to pursue reconciliation and to build bridges between groups, within people. And especially in times like these, when we feel that our leaders are trying to divide us and create rift among community. And what is interesting in all that I have said and what Jesus said is that we cannot follow this lifestyle individually in our corner just for ourselves. We, it, we cannot look at the beatitude and say, "Okay, what do? Am I okay with this? Check, check, check. Okay, I'm going to heaven." That's not what it's all about. The kingdom of heaven, the God's realm, or the new world Jesus came to preach, will not arrive and not see the light of the day if all are not if all are not included all has to be included even the destitute even those who are unlucky the, even the poor and if the those the left overs of our society if i may say cannot find their place well we will never achieve this this is why it's a little more than showing compassion for the destitute, those who are struggling, and a little more to be in solidarity with them. It's not about seeing the beatitude and something like a very beautiful sentimental text and we look at it and we feel good. No, it's a call to action. A call to action, it's... it's, it's what are you going to do about this? You know, you claim to be Christian. You claim to be disciple of Jesus. Well, do something. And it's, that's why it's a reminder of regardless of our situation, 
regardless of our luck, regardless of a position in society, God does not abandon us. And as Christian, we're called to follow this invitation Jesus set us and not to abandon, not to reject, not to set aside anyone. So that's it for today. I thank you for watching. I remain Stéphane Vermet, the lectionary man, and I hope that you will join me very soon. Take care and bye-bye.